Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. It is wonderful to be with you on this day. I know that this isn't the way we all wanted to spend Mother's Day, but here we are, and we're just so grateful for what the Lord is about to do. I want to make just a few announcements, if I may. Beginning next Sunday morning, we are going to have a drive-in service, so make sure you start passing the word. We're going to have it set up to where we will be outside, you just come and we'll have a place for you to park, just back into the parking spots, and we will begin our service at 1030. Now, this is something we're going to do for a while. So we're still going to have our Wednesday night Bible studies on Facebook, and then I will also put those on YouTube. But if you would, please just make note of that, that next Sunday, that is May 17th at 1030, we are going to have a service. And it will be an outside service. So if it's really nice, you can even bring your lawn chairs and set them up in front of your cars. But we will try and keep the social distancing and keep everybody spaced accordingly. But we're going to start that at 1030. So be looking forward to that. Um, also, I wanted to just once again let you know that the Lord is continuing to take care of us. And he is showing us that he is the one that is in charge. He has taken care of all of our needs so far, and we're just so grateful for that. And he's using you to do it. So if you would, please remember that you can drop a check in the mail for your tithes and offerings, uh, or you can go to our Facebook page, and at the very top of our post, click on Tithely, or you can go to our web page. And in the menu button on the right side, it will show the um, Give to Bethel link. So you just click on there and it'll take you to the place where you can uh, click to give. So let's not forget about that because the Lord is, is doing some great things that he wants to use you. So let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, we're just so grateful for this day. We're grateful for your love and your mercy. And we're grateful for taking care of all of our needs. Father, show us how we can best serve you. We ask that you will use this day. Use your word to speak into our lives. Father, you are such a great and awesome God. And all we want to do is serve you. We know that there are needs within our community. We know there are needs right from right inside this local body. Needs for healing, needs for uh, peace. And we pray that you will move in a great way today and that your word will go forth and your word will show to us how you are strengthening us and you are providing for all of our needs. Father, we love you, we praise you, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, what I'd like you to do is listen to this song and let the Lord bless you through it, and then I'll be coming back with the message. Great high priest whose name is 
never lives and pleads for me. My name is graven on his hands. My name is written on his heart. I know that while in heaven he stands, no tongue can bid me thence depart. No tongue can bid me thence depart. Before we get started in the message, I just want to let you know that yes, I'm aware that there is a sound issue. We had to unhook my microphone that I use here in the church uh, so we can start preparing for our outside service next week. And that uh, this earbud that I have in isn't uh, doing the greatest on this, um, on this video right now or on this uh, streaming. And so I know it's going to sound like I'm in a barrel, and I am sorry for that. But we will do the best that we can. And then next week, we will be up and running. And we're just so grateful for what the Lord is, is going to be doing. So let us begin by looking into our uh, passage for today. We are going to be talking about Mother's Day. And we're going to be in the book of Titus, and we're going to be in the second chapter. We're going to look particularly at verses 3 through 5 here in just a moment. But I wanted to share something with you from my heart. You know, as a pastor for over 20 years, I have found Mother's Day actually to be one of the hardest uh, messages to preach. Some of you may be asking why. Well, the reason is like this. There are some mothers out there that uh, aren't good mothers. And uh, there are some out there that even have passed on that weren't the best mothers. And that really gives a, a poor feeling um, emotionally in certain people's spirits. And I have, um, and it's hard. Now, if you've had one of those mothers, I am sorry. 
Also, there are those out there that really want to be mothers, physical mothers, but for whatever reason, they can't. And for that, I truly am sorry. You know, I've had a good mother. I have a good mother. Mom's still alive. And I have a, a, a good mother-in-law. And I think of all the different ladies that have um, been a part of my life in my upbringing. There was a, a lady when I was growing up, her name was Peggy Stone. And uh, she was the one who uh, really introduced me to, uh, to church. I went to, to church with her and her uh, children. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, there have been many fond memories, go there on Sunday school and things like that. So uh, that was the regular service that I, uh, the regular times in which I went to church was with, uh, with Peggy Stone. But then I think of other ladies throughout my life. I think of my grandmother and uh, Jill's grandmothers. Uh, you know, th there, there are just so many ladies that, that really have had an impact in my life. And I'm just so thankful for them. And so that's why today's message is going to be uh, taken in a little bit different direction. While we will be mixing in some, uh, some Mother's Day, some, some actual physical Mother Day uh, things, I really want us to take to a, a new direction of looking at, uh, at it from the standpoint of focusing upon godly and righteous women uh, who can be seen as a spiritual mother. I think of Teddy. Uh, many of you have heard me talk about Teddy, Teddy Chang. He's a pastor in Ecuador, uh, one of my best friends in Ecuador. I have a, a few of them that I really consider my best friends. And Teddy talks about his, the, the lady who led him to the Lord. She was a missionary, and she, asked, she ended up asking Teddy to uh, work with her and to do some translation for her, some interpretation. And Teddy wasn't a, a Christian, but through the interpretation and through hearing the gospel message, Teddy uh, came to know Jesus as Savior, and it was this lady who, who did this, and he calls her, uh, her spirit, his spiritual mother. And so I want to talk about that a little bit this morning. So we're going to begin by looking at Titus chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. And this is what the word of the Lord reads. In the same way, older women are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not slaves to excessive drinking, but they are to teach what is good so that they may encourage the young women to love their husbands and to love their children, to be self-controlled, -control pure, workers at home, kind, and submission to their husbands so that God's word will not be slandered. As we think about what a spiritual mother is, we're going to look at this in the sense of the way that the older woman is to teach the younger woman. Okay? So it's not necessarily talking about the, the mother training her daughter, but the spiritual mother becoming a spiritual mother and training someone in the admonition of the Lord, in the growth of the Lord, and teach them to do the things that they need to do. Yes, there are some aspects of, of things that go on in the home, but then there are other aspects that deal with more behavior, personal, things like that. So I want to get to those. But let me talk real quick about the context. The context of this whole chapter or, or of, of this passage is about Christian living. In Titus 2, verses 1 and 2, it speaks to the responsibilities of the older men to the younger men. So, so guys, while you're watching this, the same principles will apply to you. So I don't want you to think that this is a Mother's Day message so you don't have to listen. You need to listen even more 
because you have a responsibility. So while the some of the things are different in what you need to teach the older men, or the excuse me, the younger men, you need to understand that the principles are still the same, that you have a responsibility. Now, verses 3 through 5, which we have just read, are the responsibilities of the older women to the younger women. Verses 6 through 8 speak to the responsibility of the younger, excuse me, the younger men in their livelihood, that is life. And verses 10, 9 and 10 speak to the responsibility of the slaves to the masters. So with the context understood, I want to focus back to verses 3 through 5, the responsibilities of the older women to the younger women. And while the passage is speaking about wifely, uh, wifely duties, wifely duties, there is a greater application. So before we jump into it, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we are grateful for this day. We pray that you will move in such a great way and that you will show us how we can best serve you. Father, thank you for this word today. Teach us from your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so there are basically uh, three areas that we're going to be talking about for you women as far as what you must do. First, you must pass along wisdom. Now, this is done in, in various ways, and it first starts talking about behavior. It says, be reverent in behavior. If Paul would have stopped there, it would have been so vague. There would have been so many gray areas, but he was specific in, in trying to get us to understand what a good or a reverent behavior looks like. Now, he, in, in some of the things that we're going to be talking about here, he's not necessarily stereotyping women. Don't think that. Don't think that. He's specifically talking to the Cretan women, the women of the Isle of Crete. And, and there are a lot of cultural things that we don't understand, but they were not known to be the, the most godly women. And when we get to uh, one part here, I'm going to kind of talk about that. But I wanted to, to talk about the behavior. First, he says, be reverent. Be reverent in behavior. Now, what the word reverent really means here is be a be one who is worthy of respect. We all know people, men and women, we all know people who are very kind, they're very gentle, yet they're very firm, and no matter what they say, you respect them. You love them because you know that what they're going to tell you, though it may hurt for a, a moment, they love you and they're going to tell you what you need to hear. They have earned your respect. So, so when it says be reverent in behavior, that is be worthy of respect. Now, I found that it also says this about, uh, about reverent, is being marked with holiness, reflecting God's character, and specifically speaking of the older women. Marked with holiness, reflecting God's character in her. So you are to be a person who is displaying God's character and showing people that you are the one that God is, is, is using. Next, it says, don't slander. Be truthful. Don't walk around spreading lies. And I'm not saying that this is something that women do. I'm just saying this is, this is the context of the passage. This is the culture in which Paul is talking. So they, they were known to be slanderers. They were known to be gossipers, backbiters, tellbearers. 
So he said, be reverent, that is, show God's character. Be truthful. And then the, the next one here is not addicted to wine. There's an old term that I, I heard. It's called being a wine bibber. And he's saying don't be a wine bibber. He's not talking about not drinking wine, but what he is saying is do not be addicted to it. Don't be an alcoholic. And in the culture, you were known to be somebody in society if you could handle your liquor, if you could handle your drink. So the more you drank, the better it was for you. But I want to, I want to change that in context for, for our situation. I want to change that just ever so slightly. And because this word where it talks about not being addicted to wine really deals with being level-headed, having your wits about you. Be focused upon the Lord. Be focused upon what you are to do. Have a, a level head and do what it is that you are to do. And then the last thing. So, so first we have the positive. Then we have a couple negative things of uh, things not to do. And then we go back to a positive thing. And I love the way that Paul did this because He's ending this, this, um, this sentence, or beginning, he's ended the sentence, he's beginning the next sentence with something very positive. Teach what is good. So let me, let me jump down into teaching. And I want you to think about something, uh, I want you to think about this for your own lives. Teaching is, uh, is something that is active, and it is with a purpose. It is not something that you just do once and you leave it alone. You know, if that's the way it was, then all pastors, we would preach one passage at a time, and we would never go back and use that passage in anything else. But since God's word is alive and it's active and it's sharper than any two-edged sword, we can go back and we can continue to refer to passages that we maybe we've preached in other, uh, other times, maybe we've taught in other times. Uh, I know that in my, in my Bible, and while I have a, a newer Bible that is new for me, um, I've recently started um, making my notes again in my Bible. Well, what this does for me is it allows me to, to see what the Lord has, has been telling me. And then I want to be able to use those notes to tell, to talk to other people and to continue to teach. Now that's as a pastor, but as, as a woman, an older woman teaching a younger woman, and it doesn't always have to be older in age as, but this, that's the context, but it could be older in spiritual maturity. So when you have a, a, someone, a woman who's more spiritually mature than, than a younger woman or a less spiritually mature, then you continually teach. You are active in your life and you're doing it with a purpose. What is the purpose that you need to be teaching other women? The purpose is to help them grow in Christ. And do you realize that every time you teach, you grow because you're learning too. You have to continue to teach them. Now, so, so it is active and it is, it is done with a purpose. And this is really one-on-one. -on -one. That's what this is being talked about. It, now, there's nothing wrong with having a, a group of ladies. And you have one person who is, who is more spiritually mature and, you, and they're teaching. Uh, that is not, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But again, this is more in the context of one-on-one of -on -one discipling, mentoring. And in that, the purpose, again, is to bring them closer and closer to Christ. Now, let's get back to what this is saying. Oh, 
I'm sorry, jumping ahead on my notes here. And again, not only is it active and with a purpose, it is one-on-one, -on -one, discipling, mentoring, and it is focused. That is, you are passing on to the less mature in, in spirit, you're, you're, you're passing on what it is to be a believer uh, in Christ and what it is to be a, a, a woman of Christ, a godly woman. Now, it also goes back to some physical aspects. So, so the Word of God reads, so that that they are uh, that that they teach, they are to teach what is good, so that they may encourage the younger women. Now, I'm going to get to the word encourage in a moment. Okay, so so don't think I'm skipping over that. And it says. The encouragement, and again, you'll hear what the word means in a moment, to love their husband and their children. Okay, so the first thing that, that you are to encourage them in is what it means to be a wife. Um, in today's world, it, there are a lot of negative thoughts that are going about going around about being a, a wife but women know wives know that uh, as much as we men want to think we're all that in a bag of chips sometimes we're nothing more than the crumbs uh, I heard um, a gentleman in Arkansas, uh, in the church I pastored down there, he said that I am the head of the house, but my wife is the neck that controls the head. So we understand what it really means that, um, that we're not all that. But ladies, let me tell you, our younger ladies, especially in today's world, need to hear that they're going to have issues in their marriage and it's okay. And they need to learn how to love their husband and what that means. I mean, my goodness, Jill has put up with me for over 37 years now. And uh, I know my sister-in-law has put up with my brother uh, since 1970. Eight, I believe 1979 so they are uh, working on a few more years than Jill and I uh, my mom before my dad passed away uh, put up with dad for 26 years uh, Jill's grandparents put up with each other for uh, for over 50 years um, so and and if you had known Jill's grandpa he, he was definitely, uh, he was a card. Jill says that I learn everything that I do, everything that I know, everything that I try, I, I've learned from him. And so there is something about older women teaching younger women about loving your husbands, about loving children, uh, about nurturing them, about caring for them. And then it goes on and it talks about how they are to be self-controlled, pure workers at home, kind, submission, in submission to their husbands. Uh, here, as it moves on from the the duties of loving the husbands and the and the children, and it says be self-controlled and pure. This this is more of uh, be above reproach, be sensible, be moral. Uh, be focused upon what you are to do and be. And it says, be workers at home. Discover the joys. This means to, to discover the joys of being a wife, a homemaker, and a mother. And I know, again, don't get me wrong. I understand today's culture. Jill works outside the home. And my 
uh, I have a daughter-in-law who works outside the home and I have another daughter-in-law who is a homemaker. And both of them are excellent at what they do. Both of them. And so let's not think that we are degrading anyone if, if you're working outside the home because that's definitely not it. But if you choose to work inside the home, or even if you choose to work outside the home, I mean, there are still things that, that we need to be thinking about uh, inside the home. So discover the joys of being a wife, a mother, a homemaker. So that's really what this means. Now, now I want to I want to hit one word, and then I'm going to move on quickly. It says in and in submission to their husbands, <coughs> ladies. Nowhere does Paul ever say, nor does he indicate or imply, nor does God imply, that you are to be subservient to your husband. It's not what that says. The word submission, and he uses it in the book of Ephesians also, is a word that focuses or that has the intent of, of understanding that it, it's a military term. And it means to come alongside. So when it says in submission to their husbands, what it's saying is not subservience, not, not being subservient, but it means to come alongside and to support and to love, and to be there with them, for them, through the battle. That's what that means. So, that's why guys have a lot of responsibility. And Christian men should really understand this. But we are not to te treat our wives like they're servants. My goodness, I, yesterday morning... Jill has been has been ill. You all know this, or if you have it now, you do. Um, she's trying. She's got some fluid, a little bit of fluid around her heart. It's causing uh, her not to be able to sleep well. And so, before I came to the church yesterday morning, I wanted to be uh, of help to her, um, and in our house, not just to her, but in our house. And so I, I, started, I started washing dishes. And she came out and she grabbed the towel and she wanted to help dry the dishes. And I had to put my foot down and tell her to go sit down. That, I wasn't, that she, didn't, she wasn't going to do that because I wanted her to rest. So see, I respect her. I love her. But she is willing to do what she, what she feels she, she has to do or wants to do to be a part of, um, of the, to be a, a part of, 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 of the running of the household, if you will. See, I don't cause her or make her to do this. And she doesn't make me to do it. We work together. So we're in the battle together. We love each other and we respect each other. And that's what this word submission means. Now let me move on uh, because I don't. Uh, I want to uh, get into this next word of um, encouragement, and so you must be an encouragement. The word "encourage" denotes to train, so we we've, we've talked about that, but it we can also see it as to train by word and example or word and deed. Um, so. I want you to, to think about this. I want you to, to, as older women, spiritual mothers, be an example of love to your family and friends. Again, just like Jill, you, she is one who focuses upon the grandbabies. Yes, that's a southern term. She focuses upon the grandbabies. She is she is frustrated because with this whole thing that we're going through uh, here with this this virus that she can't go and, and see them. They can't come over and see us. 
uh, we're just trying to be precautious. Uh, we're, we're, you know, she has asthma. One of our grandchildren have a, has asthma. So we don't want to cause any undue burdens on them when it comes to their sicknesses. But every day she talks to her, her mom, she talks to her dad, she, uh, she talks to our kids. Um, so there is a, there is a love she, she just exudes because of who she is. And I want you to be that same example, uh, not just in word, but, but in deed. You know, there's a saying that goes around, and, and it, this will even go with the next one. People don't care how much you know till they know how much you care. So words are empty. Actions are full. So you, you match up your words, and you match up your action, and you let people see. And so, ladies, I want you to show this to... Uh, to those that are, are less mature, those that are even, you know, maybe they haven't come to know the Lord as, as Savior yet, but you can be an example to them. And be an example to love the unknown and the unlovely. Uh, I think that goes without, uh, uh, without much explanation, except to say that, you know, there are people that are, are not um, lovely, if you will. They are not kind, but you just have to show the love of Christ to them. There are people that you don't know that you have to show the love of Christ to them. Now, I'm not suggesting that it's easy to love others, but I am suggesting that the generation of young women coming up in this world, they need to see this. They need to see love being modeled around them and in their lives. And you may very well pass on the greatest model, or you may very well be the greatest model that they'll ever have. So you need to pass it on. Be that example. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is, and I'm going to move through it quickly, is you must pass along godly values. In the very last sentence or the very last part of, of this verse it says so that God's word not be slandered now we've already talked about slandered earlier meaning um, not truthful but here again it means not falsified that means so that, that God's word will not uh, be falsely uh, twist them. So when you do these things, the examples, everything we've talked about, when you do this, then you are saying that God's word is true. But there has to be some values. So what kind of values are we talking about? There are many, but I will only mention, uh, mention them in, in passing. Uh, you can reflect on them in your life. If you're, if you're a person who writes, who likes to write, you can write this down. Uh, pass, pass on the high esteem of obedience of the Lord. So to obey the Lord is, is a great calling. And it's something we, we have to do. Uh, we're rebellious, so we don't always like to do that. But, but when we do speak truth and when we do obey the lord we aren't going to be uh, bending the rules we aren't going to be looking for loopholes will your husband will your children will others outsiders learn about obedience from you I hope so. Just like they need to learn obedience from, from all of us who are believers. Now, guys, yours is coming. In a month, yours is coming. So I'll be speaking to you in a month. Will you pass on high regard for the assembling uh, together of other believers? What we call church. 
Or will you pass on a set of shifting worldly values? I, I hear, as a pastor, I hear excuses often. And usually I'll hear them from the kids. Unintentionally, but I hear them from the kids. Oh, missed you in church the other day. Oh, we had a ball game. Well, missed you in church. I just needed to rest. Mom needed to rest. Dad needed to rest. That's, our, that's their only day off. You see, there are many excuses that we put out. That, uh, my goodness, even as a, uh, before I was a pastor, you know, I made excuses. But sometimes we have to stand up and say, no more excuses. You see, church comes last when it needs to come a lot higher on the list of priorities. I know that in our society, in our culture, that's not a, a positive thing to say. Well, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. Nope, you don't. And a car doesn't have to live in a garage to be a car. But it protects it. We need each other, folks. We need each other. We need to be gathered together in the assembly of other believers. That's why God put us together. He said, forsake not the assembling of yourself together as the manner of some, but when you come together, encourage one another. Now, encourage is, is what we do when we love each other and we care for each other, but it's, it's also a time of training where we train together and we go back out into this world. Will you pass on things such as tenderness and kindness and forgiveness and mercy? Will you pass on the biblical value of, of personal responsibility. We're responsible for all that we do, all that we say, all that we're going to be going through. And this responsibility, people need to see that we're taking it seriously. So let me, let me wrap this up. By saying that this Mother's Day, this is Mother's Day, and it recognizes, the actual day recognizes the physical mothers. But I admit I do not envy the, I do not envy, uh, the mothers for the work that they do. And I realize that Christian mothers and even fathers are under attack in our nation like never before. You are under attack from Satan as he works in and through those and government and our culture and through through our peers. And they want you to conform and, and, and to use your feelings of guilt and inadequacy to, to pressure you in giving in. And I hope that's, that something has been said here that would spark a renewed interest in you to be the mother that wants to please the Lord. There are no real contracts, but there is certainly a great responsibility for you to be different than the rest. However, today's message, I wanted to focus upon being a spiritual mother. And I challenge all women to become that spiritual mother. There are young ladies out there that needs someone just like you. They need to learn how to, how to love the Lord. They need to learn how to love their husbands, love their children, love each other. And this morning, I challenge you to truly pray, to look inward, and to seek the Lord about becoming a mentor to someone. 
and then taking that one step further and becoming that mentor. Don't just look for it. Find someone and do it. And if you are someone who needs a spiritual mother in your life, I challenge you to pray and to seek the Lord to bring someone to you. Maybe this morning you need Jesus as your Savior. What a wonderful day it would be to, that you could say that on Mother's Day, May 10th, 2020, in the midst of coronavirus, by watching a Facebook video or watching it on YouTube, that I came to know Jesus as Savior. What a, what a wonderful testimony that would be. So we're going to pray here in a moment. I'm going to ask you to pray with me. But per, perhaps you're that person. Perhaps you're a person who, who has just gotten away from, uh, from following after the Lord. I pray that you will uh, focus upon, uh, upon the Lord's moving in your life and you will give yourself back to him completely. So as we pray, uh, I want you to be praying along with me. If you want to fall into these two categories. And then I want you to listen to the song that we're going to be ending with. And then I'll come back. Let's pray. Father, we love you and we praise you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this word. And I pray that you will show yourself in such great and mighty ways. Father, I ask that today, being the day that you come into our lives in a, in a different way, that you will bring salvation. If you do not know Jesus as Savior, just simply acknowledge him and receive him. And just pray after me. Father, I'm a sinner. And I need a Savior. I'm trying to do everything on my own. And I've come to the conclusion that I can't. And there's only one way that you can fix this in my life. And that's for me to receive Jesus as my Savior. And I call upon him today as Lord, as master, as boss. And I pray that I receive him as my savior today, that I receive his gift. Forgive me of my sins and help me to learn to focus upon Jesus and help me to, to know that I'm not in this alone that there's only the one who can help me through, move me through everything I'm going through, and that is Jesus. Father, I love you, and I praise you, and I thank you for the gift of salvation. Father, I pray for those who have, have prayed this, and I ask that you will just move in such a great way in their life, that you will help them to focus upon you and what you are calling them to do and be. Father, thank you for your love and thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, well, we're going to be listening to our song. So I want you to pay attention and, uh, and worship the Lord.
Mother's Day, and I pray that you will uh, truly hear what the Lord is telling you. So throughout this week, be thinking about what it means to be a spiritual influence on someone's life. Now, don't forget that next Sunday, 
next Sunday morning at 1030, we're going to be meeting here at the church. The doors will not be open. Okay, so uh, restrooms won't be open. Uh, we're just, we're, we're trying to be as cautious as we can. But we'll come in and we'll have speakers set up. Uh, hopefully it won't be raining, but if it does, we have a plan for that, but you'll still be sitting in your cars. But we look forward to seeing you next Sunday at 1030 at our drive-in service. Make sure that you invite someone to come and to be a part of it. We're not going to have any banners up yet. Uh, but know that people need to come and hear. And I will be doing some Facebook posts throughout the week to remind people that, uh, uh, that we're having this service. So I love you. We will see you then next week. But don't forget about Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, we're going to continue looking into the name of Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. All right. I love you. And we will see you next week. Have a great week in the Lord. Amen.